Tonight, a call by Ontario's largest school board to make vaccines compulsory for eligible students. Hope that like the school boards will make the right decisions and if it's looking bad, they'll pull the kids out. With back to school just days away and COVID cases rising again, the TDSB wants more students immunized and... We are unsure right now uh, where Mr. Ashby's whereabouts are, if he made it off the boat. The desperate search for a missing boater on Lake Ontario continues. Peter Ashby's sailboat washed up near the Burlington Lift Bridge, but there's been no sign of him since yesterday. Plus... They open the doors every election, you know, they hear the candidates spew, and then people don't see them. We take you to a Toronto neighbourhood that has some of the lowest voter turnout in the entire province to understand what issues matter to them in this federal election. Good evening, I'm Farah Morali. As we head into the long weekend, the countdown is officially on for back to school. It's always a stressful time, but this year, on top of the usual anxieties, teachers, parents and their kids are also contending with the uncertainties of a fourth wave of the pandemic. The chair of the Toronto District School Board is now asking the province to add the COVID-19 vaccine to the list of required vaccinations for eligible students. Lorena Redekop has more. Hey, so where do you want to sit on the train? Do you want to sit on the top or on the bottom? It's one of their last weekdays together before back to school. Charlie Sabidlo will be starting grade one. I'm excited for school because I get to meet new friends. He's got his dinosaur mask, his Minecraft mask, his Disney mask, all those things to help him meet other kids. I can understand. Dr. Anna Banerjee says masks help, though she would have liked to have also seen smaller class sizes. Oh, a good mask is a mask that fits you well. It's a snug fit, but not, you know, suffocating. Ideally with a filter, three or four layers is, is good. And something that maybe a child likes so that they have an incentive to keep it on. She says to protect younger children, all adults around them should get vaccinated. I think that there will be outbreaks. COVID probably with the Delta variant will go through some of those populations, some of the younger kids. Um, again, trying to mitigate the 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 response, most kids will get very mild illness. Today, the chair of the Toronto District School Board asked that COVID-19 vaccinations be added to the list of compulsory shots for those who are eligible, saying this would further protect our students, staff and their families from the virus and help keep our schools open. Last month, the chief medical officer said he didn't foresee schools would have to close this coming school year. Today, the province said in a statement that he'll continue to review the data to keep children, staff and schools safe. I hope that like the school boards will make the right decisions and if it's looking bad, they'll pull the kids out and make, you know, do what they need to do. Uh, of course, it's a concern, right? There's no question, right? But uh, what are you going to do, right? Like it's, he needs those social skills and so we're rolling the dice. While school will be back, the break for politicians is extended. The government prorogued the legislature, pointing to the federal election. It was supposed to be back September 13th. That's now delayed three weeks until October 4th. That means the government won't face opposition questions on schools or anything else for more than a month. Lorenda Redekop, CBC News, Toronto. As Lorenda mentioned, the legislature has been prorogued and opposition parties were quick to react today. At this point in time, when all of these things need to be addressed, when we need to have leadership the most, Doug Ford is nowhere to be found and has now said his government is not going to be anywhere to find either. As for the Ford government's claim that it's proroguing the legislature to see what impact the federal election has on Ontario, Horvath called that, quote, ridiculous and dishonest. Meanwhile, Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca issued a statement saying, quote, Ontario is in a fourth wave with cases rising every day. And Doug Ford just announced he will shut down the legislature until October so that he can continue to avoid responsibility. Everyone knows that Doug Ford has been hiding for the past two months. He needs to go back to work now. Meanwhile, Green Party leader Mike Schreiner said Doug Ford's decision to prorogue the legislature is irresponsible. Right now, Ontarians need leadership. Instead, they are stuck with a premier that is running from accountability and responsibility. The search continues for an 84-year-old man after his sailboat was found over 60 kilometres away in Burlington. Peter Ashby is a 40-year member of the Queen City Yacht Club on the Toronto Islands. That's where he was last seen yesterday. 
Jessica Ng brings us the story. Around 2.30 this morning, Hamilton police found this sailboat deserted near the Burlington lift bridge. It's called the Resolute and it belongs to 84-year-old Peter Ashby, an avid sailor and a 40-year member of the Queen City Yacht Club. His family said he, he sticks to the uh, very frequent route. Uh, he's an avid sailor. He knows the area very well. He usually goes up the coastline towards Durham area or the Scarborough Bluffs area and then comes back. So for us to find his uh, boat out towards Hamilton, it's a little unusual. It's off the route that he normally would take. He was last seen at the club Thursday at noon and was set to come back around 5 p.m. And when he didn't return, uh, concerned family members called us and we launched an investigation with the Joint Rescue uh, Task Force and they went out with our Toronto Marine Unit and we searched Lake Ontario looking for Mr. Ashby and his boat. Constable Laura Brabant of the Toronto Police Service says the Coast Guard and the Royal Canadian Air Force are involved in the search for Ashby. We have searched around the Toronto Islands, up and down the coastlines. Um, like I said, be between Durham Region, Toronto, um, our neighbours to the west, uh, Peel Regional Police, Hamilton, Halton, all the way over to Ni Niagara. Tonight, the search and rescue mission will continue and residents are being advised of the use of parachute flares in the area. Everybody's been out looking for him. Ashby is described as five foot five inches, about 160 pounds and thin with short white hair. He was last seen wearing beige shorts, a forest green jacket and a white t-shirt and hat. Back at the Queen City Yacht Club on Wards Island, the mood is subdued and quieter than usual for a Friday evening. Here at slip number five, that's where the Resolute was moored at the Queen City Yacht Club. The 27-foot sailboat and Ashby were staples of the community here. And the club tells CBC News members have been outright devastated. Club staff also say Ashby is a surgeon and helped them develop COVID-19 protocols as a safety officer. They say he is one of the true gentlemen of the club. Police ask anyone who may have seen Ashby to contact them. We just want to, you know, let his family know that we're doing everything we can and we hope that we can bring him home. Jessica Ng, CBC News, Toronto. A man is dead and another is in custody after a shooting in North York this afternoon. A witness who was driving by at the time told us what she saw. A uh, pickup truck came speeding by the construction workers, drove into the pylons, hit multiple construction workers, dove into the side um, of the bridge there where the railing is, and then um, slammed into the key fan coming out. He then was dragged out by multiple construction workers, obviously because he tried to injure others, and shot someone three times and then was pinned down until the cops came. Toronto police say their officers and York Region officers responded to the incident, which happened at Steeles Avenue and Alness Street around 1.30. As we heard from the witness, police say officers arrived to find a man suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He was transported to hospital in life-threatening condition, where he later died. Police say the suspect is believed to have been driving a stolen truck. Another construction worker was hit by the truck and was taken to hospital with minor injuries. A motorcyclist is fighting for their life tonight after a crash that involved a police car. The accident happened just after 5.30 at Queen's Park and College Street. Medics transported the driver of the motorcycle to hospital with life-threatening injuries. Roads were closed for several hours in the area. The province's Special Investigations Unit has now taken over the investigation. A Toronto woman is describing a terrifying scene inside her home earlier this week. She says she woke up in the middle of the night to see an intruder standing in her bedroom. Toronto police are investigating it as a break-in and as Dale Minuckduck tells us, part of the incident was captured on security footage. Can you describe what happened? 27-year-old Gunjun Sharma walks through home security footage of the terrifying break-in on Tuesday. And at this point here, um, he's reached our deck and try and he's trying to open the backyard door which is again connected to my bedroom it happened shortly after 2 a.m cbc obtained video from a neighbor that shows the intruder trying to open several cars on the street before arriving at the sharma's home security footage from the business next door shows him walking through the thin fenced area on the south side of the house this man came through the space over here um, and then this part of this uh, the space leads into our backyard at the end of the space is barbed wire, which the man maneuvered around. After failing to open the back door, he then hopped on a recycling bin and broke in through the kitchen window, which was unlocked. He got up and just cut the net part, the mesh part of this window open, and then just pushed the window up and 
came right in. That's when he made his way to Sharma's bedroom. I felt like something was watching me and something was present in my room. And that's when I w woke up and I woke up to my door open, which was not open at the time. And I saw a silhouette of what appeared to be a man in my room. Sharma confronted the man who gestured her to be quiet. That's when she screamed to alert her brother and parents who were sleeping in their bedrooms upstairs. When I heard no response coming from them, um, I freaked out. So anyway, um, I, I confronted this guy. I almost chased after him to oust him away from our house. Sharma says the intruder is a white male, five foot four, and was wearing a plaid shirt and a mask. He fled on foot north towards Queen Street East. The incident has neighbors like Sam Watts worried. You can definitely see people lingering around in the evenings and stuff, and I'm sure we'll add another layer of security. That's creepy. Police are still searching for the intruder. Nothing was stolen from the home. Dale Minukduk, CBC News, Toronto. Meteorologist Nick Cernkovich joins us now with a first look at the forecast. Nick, after yesterday's breezy night, I actually pulled out the fall jacket, but it actually ended up, to, ended up being a pretty nice summer day today. Yeah, you're right, Farah. Actually, uh, we had temperatures that were pretty much bang on the seasonal mark, actually exactly on the seasonal mark today. I'm going to show you that in just a second there. Uh, there's a look at what we uh, had throughout the afternoon. A uh, good deal of sunshine, or at least a mix of sun and cloud. Now, 23 degrees, or to be exact, um, I'll show you here, 23.4 degrees. So today's high was 23.4 degrees. The average, 23.4 degrees. Doesn't get closer than that. And the overnight low is pretty much uh, the same as well. Now, we are talking about some rainfall as we head into the long weekend, but not for tomorrow. Tomorrow's still looking at a mix of sun and cloud. There is a chance, and I mean a very small chance, we'll see some isolated spotty showers through tomorrow late afternoon. But really, it's tomorrow night into Sunday morning where we've got rainfall. And I'm going to time that out for you coming up in just a bit. But for now, Here's a look at Saturday's forecast, 14 degrees tonight, and then tomorrow we're looking at 25 degrees as a high and a mix of sun and cloud. We'll have your full long weekend forecast and your back to school forecast coming up in just a bit. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Nick. With the implementation of vaccine passports just weeks away, Toronto officials are urging residents to go out and get vaccinated this long weekend. The city released a list of clinics where you can get your jab this Friday and Saturday Five city-run immunization, immunization clinics will be open for walk-in vaccinations from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Toronto Public Health is also running 10 mobile and pop-up vaccination clinics throughout the weekend. For more information on when and where to get a vaccine, you can head to the city's website. To date, 77% of Toronto residents 12 and older have been fully vaccinated. The latest COVID-19 modelling suggests Canada is on track see up to 15,000 cases a day by October. Chief Public Health Officer Dr. Teresa Tam says more people getting their vaccine shots could help lower that worrying trend. Vaccination is proving to be highly protective against severe illness. In recent weeks, from July the 18th to August the 14th, the average weekly rate of new cases in the unvaccinated was 12 times higher than in the fully vaccinated while the rate of hospitalized cases was 36 times higher in unvaccinated compared to fully vaccinated. Pointing to the resurgence driven by the Delta variant, Tam urged more 18 to 39-year-olds to get vaccinated to protect the vulnerable. Only two-thirds of Canada's population is fully vaccinated, which means about 12.5 million people are either not yet vaccinated or have had only one dose. The Toronto District School Board says more than 100 of its schools will be used as polling stations for this month's federal election. Making sure that uh, staff and students are completely separate from uh, voters coming to the school to vote. Uh, they'll be located mainly in gymnasiums that have an external uh, door. Final locations will be reviewed by Elections Canada. Typically, hundreds more schools are used as polling stations. The Toronto Catholic District School Board says none of its schools will allow voting. It says that's out of an abundance of caution. Elections Canada has come under fire in recent weeks for not allowing voting, voting on college and university campuses due to COVID-19. Three Toronto ridings have some of the lowest turnout in all of Ontario. Among them, York South, Etobicoke North and Humber River Black Creek. Shannon Martin went out to the areas to try to find out why. 
At the corner of Weston and Finch, Martin Okwenka gets ready to open his new store next week. Well, it's a tough time, but uh, we still got to do what we got to do. Life continue. Ongoing support for small businesses like his is something he's hoping to hear from the parties this election. His store is in the middle of the Humber River Black Creek riding. Running from Highway 401 to Steeles, it's home to about 108,000 people. The average age is 39. The average income is 28,000. Last election, just 55% of people cast ballots. That's among the lowest in Ontario. But that doesn't mean people here aren't engaged. We took on Metrolinx. We took on the Toronto Police. We've taken on uh, immigration uh, raids, right? Like this neighborhood is, is, is politicized, it's authentic, and, and we're on the ground and we keep it real. Butterfly Gopal has spent her entire life in the Jane Finch neighborhood. It's where she's raised her kids and invests her energy. She says the area is consistently overlooked by politicians and people here are worn down. They open the doors every election, you know, they hear the candidates spew and then people don't see them. People don't relate to them in terms of, you know, how they look. This neighborhood has been historically a racialized neighborhood. And we still have politicians that are running that don't reflect the folks that live here. Judy Scro, the liberal incumbent, agreed to an interview with us, but canceled because of a scheduling conflict. She also agreed to take part in a candidate debate hosted by a community group, but canceled for the same reason. When the group told her that event is actually scheduled next week, her team says she's still unavailable. Scro has held a seat since 1999. The riding has been liberal red since the early 60s. What we see parties doing is deciding whether or not it's worth it to chase certain kinds of voters. Uh, so it's not surprising that parties are not that interested in talking to people who represent the poor, the working class in different neighborhoods because uh, the parties know that it's unlikely that those people will turn out to vote. Their voices should be as valid as anyone else's. But in practical terms, uh, in real politique uh, terms, money talks. We also reached out to the Conservative and NDP candidates earlier this week. Conservative Rinku Shah was not available. We never got a response from the NDP. Shannon Martin, CBC News, Toronto. You are looking at a live shot of downtown Toronto, maybe a little quieter than usual with folks out of town for the Labor Day long weekend. We'll check in once again with Nick Cernkovich, who has your extended forecast. Nick, looks like the start of the long weekend is shaping up to be nice, but things might get wet later. Well, that about sums it up uh, as we head through the next few days. Uh, we start out with a very nice long weekend, but we've got a few showers to contend with as we head through Sunday and Monday. So let's time things out for you. This is the system that we're watching here, and it doesn't look to have too much in the way of moisture in it, at least for our neck of the woods, but it is going to bring some rain showers. Now, this is one particular model, and it does tend to underdo the rainfall a little bit, um, but it has, uh, it, it at least gives us a good sense of the timing here. So as we head through tomorrow morning, look for a mix of sun and clouds. Same story through tomorrow afternoon. As I mentioned earlier, the risk for some isolated showers, but really it's sort of Saturday night into Sunday where we watch this line of rain showers move through. Now, Sunday morning, Good chance we're going to see some rain showers uh, if you wake up early enough. But it looks like toward the later part of the morning or at least into the early uh, afternoon on Sunday, things clear out. And then in behind it, actually expect to see some good sunshine. Monday, we've got more in the way of rainfall. But again, it starts Monday morning, early morning at a let's say through the overnight period and then basically kind of tapering off into Monday sort of mid morning. So even though we're seeing rainfall through the weekend, I think a lot of that rainfall is actually going to come through the overnight periods, which is good for most of us anyway. Uh, there's a look at the forecast through southwestern Ontario tonight. Cloudy skies 13, 14 degrees tomorrow. Temperatures up to about 26 degrees down in Windsor. Uh, for the Golden Horseshoe, we're looking at temperatures tonight, uh, 13, 14 degrees. Some areas, especially to the east end may see some um, patchy fog, but uh, otherwise uh, that burns off pretty quickly. Tomorrow highs to 25 degrees with a mix of sun and cloud. Now, as I mentioned, Sunday and Monday, we've got the risk for rain showers, but the timing of it, mostly sort of overnight events, 
Tuesday should generally stay dry for the first day back to school. High of 23 degrees, more rain showers into Wednesday. Thanks very much, Nick. Looking for ways to stay cool this long weekend, the City of Toronto has extended its summer pool season. Nine pools across the city will stay open until September 19th. Regular summer hours will remain in effect until the 8th and after that. Those nine pools will be open on weekday evenings and all day on weekends. Some of the pools staying open are the West Mall, Monarch Park and Alex Duff. Well, the Canadian International Air Show is this weekend and the pilots practice some of their moves today. show will feature some jaw-dropping daredevil maneuvers from the Canadian Forces Snowbirds and a number of other rare military and civilian aircrafts. The pilots are gearing up for their big performance both tomorrow and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 3. And that is our show for you tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I am Farah Morali. Have a great long weekend. Good night.